Welcome back guys, Prashant here from Major Marketer. It's been uh, quite a time that I was away from my YouTube channel and I am back with something exciting, something interesting. So in this video we talk about something which is uh, important for people in, who work in the field of real estate. So what these people essentially do is they run a lot of campaigns, Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, they might run YouTube ads, eventually drive traffic to their website. Of course they run lead ad campaigns as well but they drive traffic to their camp website and the motive or, or when people land on their page their motive is that people should give them their information so that their sales team can follow up from there. So when you have a form right so analytics definitely tracks who's coming, where is coming, what is doing, where is it going and all right how many times is coming, whether they converted not, session quality and a lot of other reports. But what if you want to track some additional details about the form analytics. Why I think this is very important is because people invest so much of money, these realtors, and drive traffic to the website, but only to make sure that those people eventually fill the form. But what these people do is they don't get into understanding the insights of form, which is getting more insights about the behavior of a user restricted to the form. So I call it form analytics. There are certain companies out there in the market which might you know, give you a lot of details and insights which go beyond traditional Google Analytics numbers or anything that analytics cannot give you, right? So, so these tools are expensive at the same time and a and lot, of, lot of these small real estates who don't show much of interest into getting more insights about their farm analytics. But what I have seen in my experience of working with a lot of real estate agencies uh, or real estate companies in last one month is that if I could somehow optimize their form analytics by capturing some extra data points and then analyzing, right? what I see is if I optimize that form by 5%, 10%, the revenues of the company will increase by 10, 20%. That is how the projections are scaled at this point in time. So I thought maybe I can you know, come back and explain as to how we do that. So join me as I take you through. I have this website. So, uh, so basically what happens is you know, whenever people come to a landing page, they interact. There's so many form fields. So I'm just going with the normal field, uh, normal form field on this website. So we have name, phone number, right? So what happens is, you know, there are certain times where you have to get more details about these form analytics. That means how many people, uh, you know, fill the form, but how many people came to the site. So when you know that, you can track them as goal conversion. So you know how many people came and how many uh, people eventually converted or maybe how many sessions there was a goal and how many sessions were initiated on the website. That's how you can say, yes, my website is serving the purpose, right? Second thing, right? It is need not, it, you need not take all the people who visit your website or you can take only those people who visit this particular page and how many people eventually fill the form. That is one, one other report to understand whether people who come to the page, are they doing what they should be doing in the first place? Third thing is people start filling the form, but whoever started to fill the form, did they eventually completed the form? This is one report that you can track, right? Fourth thing, you want to track what is the time duration that they take from the time they load this page till the time they click on submit button. That is one other report, I call it fifth report. Maybe in another report, how many, uh, you know, I want to know which form fields are causing people to abandon, whether people, you know, fill and not go to second or people fill the second and not go to third. So if people fill, not go to second, we call it as an abandonment of first. That means the, the people abandon after the first. If people fill the second form, second field and then not go to third one, we call it as an abandonment and that abandonment actually happened in the second. So we can some extra data points and this is possible if you can really learn JavaScript and use event handlers and, and use some, you know, custom coding where you can, you know, you know capture those points, right? So a lot of additional insights can be, you know, can be, sent to analytics and thereby you can improve your analytical insights specifically to uh, this area of form, right? But in this video, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, okay, let me, let me tell you. So I've told you five reports, maybe you can find another report as to which uh, field that people go to second time. That means people fill here, people fill here, and then people go to the first one. So you can understand or you can find which field is that field that's taking people again to that. That means the second time or third time people eventually go there. And then uh, you can understand how much time does it take from people to go from first field to second field. This is another report, right? So you can you can put all of them into a nice, uh, you know, you know, you know, what do you say, Excel sheet, and then you know, query the data and get some amazing insights. And then by you can you can really find whether those fields are not being filled because it's some distraction, right? Or maybe your call to action button is not so clear. So a lot of things can be done. Right. So what I'm going to do is in this video, I'm going to show you something that whenever people try and fill something, example, you see, whenever people come here and try and fill something like Prashant and they don't type in anything and they click submit. 
So there is an error, right? So I want to capture those errors and send them over to analytics saying what errors are generally uh, causing people to, you know, to not submit or it's a failure in submission. So I want to capture those errors, whether the errors are coming mostly from the email field or the name field or the subject field. So what I've done is here is whenever this thing appears, the email address entered is invalid, right? So I want to send an event. So if you want to see that here, you see here, the event is already sent to analytics saying Gmail error. And if you want to say I'm sending an event and the name of the event is form error and the action is email error. So I can go and see how many people eventually had an error when it comes to email field. So let's come back to Google Tag Manager, which is the center of measurement that we do, right? So what I have done is I created a small tag, which is a GA tag, which is going to send an event to analytics whenever that event is found. So what I'm doing is I created an event, form error is the category name, and the email action name is email error. And I'm using one trigger here. And this trigger is nothing but whenever people go and fill something, you know, irrelevant, which is not uh, exactly what is expected in this particular field system will throw an error which reads like this this email address is entered so what I've written is I've written a custom JavaScript variable I'll show that variable right so whenever this text appears in the content the custom JavaScript variable will return true if it is not there it will return false so let me show you that as well so when I came to the page you see here when I come here this is false custom JavaScript error is false but after I fill the form I click you know this is true why this is true because this element appeared I just showed you whenever I landed here, there was nothing like this. But once I entered something irrelevant, which is not the right, uh, you know, text or right, not the right syntax for an email address, I click on submit. Automatically, this uh, alert appeared or the error message appeared. And whenever that appears, I am sending an event to analytics. So what I have done is, first thing, I have created an event, and that event is sending an event to analytics saying it's a form error, and the error type is email error. But that is only happening when this particular thing pops up on the screen. So how am I doing that? Let me show you. So I go to variables. I go to variables. I create a custom JavaScript. And this custom JavaScript is simple. I just copy this text. You see this text. And I try to check if that appears in the content. See function I wrote variable content document.body.inText. For people who don't know what is document.body.inText, so let me go inspect. Let me show you like this. This is the document, right? Everything. If I select this, everything is selected. But I don't want the entire document. I want the text in the document. What text? Body anyways, it will, head, we don't generally need it. So I put document.body. It shows the entire body. But I want the text in the body. So I put in a text. You see everything. If in the if in this in the text, if I find this particular thing, right? So how do you do that? You write index of and then give it. And if that is greater than one, that means it is there. Right? If it is there, you can simply return true. If not, you can return false. So I've written a code like that. You see here, content is document.body. And their error is simply I copied this. I assigned that to a variable. This email address entered is invalid. So this is the one. I have assigned it to a variable. And I said, if content.search, I'm using a search method here, right? Uh, content.search, search what error? If it is greater than one, greater than minus one means that text is there in the, uh, in the document. If it is not there, imagine you are searching for this and that does not exist in the document. Then it will say minus one. Minus one means it does not exist. You can use index of, you can use content search um, method. So greater than minus one, I return true, else false. That is why when I came to this particular page, right, I did not enter anything, right. If you see something here, it says false because that text was not there. But after I entered something, right, I entered an irrelevant email address, an email address which is not syntax, the, not the right uh, email in the right syntax, then it threw me an error and it turned it to be true. So what it is doing, this is looking for this content in the web page document. If that is there, it is going to return true. If it is not there, it is returning false. So this is one variable I've written. Then I created one more trigger. You see this trigger here. The, the trigger that I've created is all clicks, right? One, one, one is there, right? And then I created contact as page trigger. So let me change it here. Rather than saying contact as page, right? Let me say contact as page. Email error trigger. I'll write like this, contact page. And I said all elements and CGS contain true. Now you might say, Prashant, why am I using all elements? Because when people click automatically, it's a form submit. For some reason, this, uh, you know, 
WordPress was not supporting it. So what I thought, maybe I'll use Alt Click Trigger. So whenever people type in something which is not right and then they click here, they see an alert here, they see an error, error. So what people do generally, when they see an error, they want to fix it, so they simply go and click and whenever that click happens, this trigger, this variable will capture the value true. And once it is true, the tag will fire. So you see, all click. This, see, you might click whenever you land on the page, you click here, you click here, let me do one thing. So let me refresh this page. You see, you simply go here. I don't know if this is working, it's not working. I had this thing open for quite some time. So I was doing it in the afternoon, then we were doing something else. So I didn't realize that I had to refresh it. So see what I'm doing, I click on not connected. It opens that page. It's going to contact this page. Yes, is it connected? Yes, it is connected. Now you see when container loads, you see the variable here, the variable is false. Why? That text did not appear. So what I'm now going to do is I type something here and then I click on submit. When I click on submit, you see what happens. It is captured the click, but still it is false. Why? Whenever I click at that particular time, this CJS is going to look for this particular text. If it is there, it will return false, uh, true. If it is not there, it will return false. So what I'm doing is, right? So now once you see this, what happens? You simply go here and another click happens. When another click happens, you see another click. This time it is true. And whenever it is true, the event is triggered and the event is sent to analytics and the name of the uh, event is the category of the event is swami error and uh, the action is email error. So this is how you exactly track what errors and this can be replicated for different errors that you find. Sometimes the field is required here, sometimes here the field is required, sometimes you enter something different, it might throw a different error. So if you want to capture whatever errors, you can send them over to analytics and uh, you can thereby, you know, get a lot of you know, you know, insights about how you can really optimize a lot of content available on the internet so this is something that we extremely work with big clients who invest huge money into driving campaigns and expect people to interact and fill with the lead applications on the site i hope this uh, gives you some great content when it comes to the measurement activity we employ on the website and uh, we always come up with something amazing right and my team is also creating videos we create some amazing content keeping measurement at the center of everything that we do and please do stay connected to our channel please subscribe and if you think this is really adding value please share it and uh, we would come back with another video soon thank you